Hello everyone, good afternoon. I am Prasoon Agrawal from EQ International Magazine and today I am here with Mr. Rajesh Bhatt who is the Managing Director of Juvi India Renewable Energies. Hello sir, how are you? Good afternoon to you. Thank you so much sir. First of all, I would like to begin with a brief introduction about Juvi India and what services does it offer for the Indian solar market. So Juvi India is a 100% sub subsidiary of UE AG which has uh, got an installation base of about 4200 megawatts across the globe in 20 odd countries. We are third largest uh, developer APC company in the world as per wiki uh, that's recently published. We in India uh, were established in 2010 and have now finished seven years. We have uh, approximately about uh, 180 odd megawatts constructed and another 300 megawatts under construction now. Uh, we as a philosophy are looking at, uh, at solar PV uh, on the grid scale to provide uh, grid parity to, to the investor and are pursuing the, the technology where storage can be used for uh, for peak shaving, for uh, behind the meter technologies. So that's our, our way forward for business. So recently, Rajiji, we have seen uh, uh, tenders, uh, uh, the, the, the tariffs going down with each with each and coming with each coming tender. So how does that affect the EPC business in the industry? So uh, in the recent tenders that you have seen, uh, it's always been that the developers or IPPs who have their own EPC arms or most of the time have been winning tenders and uh, and they have been very aggressive in the market. The reason could be multiple, the reason could be the cost of fund, the cost of the project, the cost of modules uh, that, that comes along uh, to bid so low prices uh, in, the, in the tariffs. But interestingly, people who do not have an EPC wing, I think the pressure will be on companies like us to make sure that we are able to deliver the projects within the bandwidth of prices that they are expecting. The prices that we have seen that uh, that the, that all the all the IPPs are expecting expecting are pretty aggressive, and from a business point of view, uh, it appears that you need to look at lot of a uh, lot of cost optimization uh, which is uh, which is which probably is possible but it also leads to a scenario where business could be sustainable uh, the reason we believe that it is not sustainable is because you are looking at quality which is uh, which is uh, the paradigm requirement for any plant that needs to be there in a location for 25 years so that could be compromised and you could see that uh, the businesses that are being done are uh, with a compromise on deliverables. Can you also throw some light uh, on, on any recent noteworthy project which you must have installed and uh, how has been the performance of that particular project? So we've uh, recently done uh, a 51 megawatt project uh, for a very large uh, utility. We've also done a 24 megawatt project uh, uh, recently. The performances of all the plants that we have executed in India or outside India have been delivering better results than what we have promised uh, at the time of signing contract. They have been better by at least about one or two percent, both from both from performance ratio and from the perspective of availability. The availability that we have seen on the plants that we have built are close to 99.9% and the performance ratios have been excellent. Uh, the proof of this is that now currently we are managing um, many O&M projects that are built by third party EPCs uh, which shows that the, the operation and maintenance that we are doing for the plants that has been invested by investors are really working well and these plants have been built on in all in 2011 and 2012. The recent experiences of large projects that we are build, be, that we're building uh, also is uh, on, on a VAR uh, footing method. So we, we believe that it is, uh, it is that 
there's a lot of work that is there but at the same time we need to make sure that we are able to deliver the project with quality if we deliver the project with low capex or low cost of materials or compromise on quality of materials then the operation maintenance cost becomes expensive uh, because either you spend at the initial stage when you invest on capex or you spend it later at the time of operational maintenance so the investor has a choice whether he wants to spend early or spend late uh, Rajit ji, energy storage has been a very uh, hot topic in the industry recently and it is poised to play a very important role uh, in, the, in the penetration of renewable energy, in a, specifically in a market like India where there's uh, lack of grid, uh, grid connectivity, so much, so much requirement of distributed generation. So what are your views on energy storage as a, uh, as a game changer for the solar industry? We think energy storage is the next buzzword in the industry. Uh, to do so, what we have done is we have uh, done a project, our group has done a project in Australia, which is one of the largest projects for our copper mines. The project is uh, 10.6 megawatt on, uh, on, uh, on a tracker basis with a 6.4 megawatt hour of ba uh, lithium ion batteries. This project, uh, this renewable energy so solar is connected to uh, the diesel generators that is required for copper mines. Now, what it does is it it uh, it shaves off the the uh, the diesel consumption, and and the technology with controls that we have used are able to optimize the returns for the investor to the extent that the investment is seeing a return of anywhere between four to five years. And I think uh, if you look at India, India has probably about uh, 330 gigawatt of uh, installed power. Out of that, 60 to 70 percent is on coal-based power stations. The rest is a mixture of uh, renewable and nuclear power. Uh, if you look at renewable power, uh, since it's not a firm power, I think the storage is the way forward. Interestingly, there are two things that storage or three things that the storage can use for can be used for one is where you use it behind the meter when you use it behind the meter I think it is uh, for the industrial application and assuming today uh, the industrial uh, consumer is paying in the range of seven to nine rupees uh, and the commercial consumer is paying of higher of uh, 10 rupees in, in, in all the areas in India there is every possibility that this can be reduced to uh, at least by 30 to 40 percent using storage for industrial application. The, the worry that the distribution companies uh, could have is that uh, you know, we are losing good industrial customers or pay customers. But I think uh, in time to come, cost of operation for any industry is going to be predominant and energy is going to be one of the predominant uh, costs that every industrial consumer is going to look at and the storage with solar or storage with solar and wind combination could be the best way that you could get the cost of energy at an optimum level. So how do you see the policy environment of the country right now concerning the renewables market, specifically solar? Yeah, so before we go to the policy, I just want to add another two things on the storage. The second uh, aspect of storage is for, for grid management. And I think there's a lot of studies that is going on to make sure that whether should we use battery as a storage media or whether we should use pump as a storage media. But the last thing that is very interesting also from a storage perspective is for uh, EV charging. And I think since India is planning to go in a big way to be to be uh, uh, to have all the auto uh, all the cars in uh, all the vehicles on uh, that uh, that is uh, on an EV mode I think the the potential for uh, for storage is going to be humongous answering to your question what what policy needs to be done I think if we need to encourage uh, the the business for renewable energy 
the policy today addresses uh, areas as to how to make sure that we people are willing to bid low on a reverse bid tariffs but that is not the end of the road uh, uh, the the government or the policy maker also needs to look at how do we then get a quality plant at the location the second thing they also need to invest time and effort is to make sure that how do i how do we make sure that the policy addresses concerns on open access concerns on group active group, group captive mechanism if these areas are are uh, are addressed i think today the the market is probably about 3000 megawatts on the open access this could probably quadruple in 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 time to come if the policies address open access issues and group captive issues the the last but not the least i think we also need to if we need to encourage the solar power we need to make sure that issues related to land issues related to uh, the uh, the uh, grid availability at the appropriate location is always available the the most important fact of matter is uh, for any business to be sustainable i think is predictability today the market has got a requirement of almost about 85 gigawatts in the next 5 years so that's looking at approximately 15 to 20 gigawatts every year that's a huge market but then with that we should have predictability in the market which means the government should announce policies which is for the next 2 years what plans are going to come and make sure that the plans follow a particular timeline immaterial of external influences and impacts of other countries uh, policies and uh, also what is important is that in addition to this we have to make sure that if you want investment in this business which is looking like today approximately for an 85 gigawatt solar projects uh, approximately 50 to 60 billion dollars we need to make sure that the market is always sustainable with the with the impetus on market being sustainable what is important is that there will be huge growth for manufacturing that will be available in the country with the motto or the or, or the slogan make in india uh, which is which is the need of the art to make sure that we have a tremendous growth on on the jobs in the solar industry uh, we should make sure that we create that market sustainability once market sustainability comes you will have investment once the investment is there there will be growth of jobs for all our youngsters in this clean energy environment and i think that's the need of the art and the government and the policy maker should think how we should be there go there thank you so much for your time and this opportunity mr rajesh thank you so much